Good day there guys, how's it going? Welcome back to another episode of r slash am I the asshole? Am I the asshole for telling a co-worker that her choices of name for her twins is idiotic? A co-worker of mine, 39 female, recently had twin boys after a long battle with infertility. She has made her first appearance into the office with her new babies to introduce them to our team. When asked what she had named the boys, as up until this appearance she was undecided, she told me that she was naming them Sean. When I asked about the other baby, she said no, they are both Sean, one with an A and one with an E. So, Sean and Seen. I guess Sean can be with double E, but I've never seen that myself. This co-worker's last name is also Sean. When I pointed this out, she said yes, like Tom Tom or JJ. I immediately, and without thinking, said, that is the most idiotic thing that I've ever heard, and it's going to be so confusing. A bunch of people laughed, and a bunch immediately looked away. After she left, I got a few text messages saying it's not my place to comment on people's choices of name. Am I the asshole for saying that this is a terrible naming idea? Edit, additional information, no, they don't have middle names. She wanted their names to be like Tom Tom or JJ. This is apparently not the first round of negative feedback she has had. We are on good terms. We have worked together across three companies over 12 years. She just said, it'll grow on you. The names are both pronounced Sean, like Sean. Ah yes, they're pronounced tomato, like tomato. Now in the comments, I'm gonna get downvoted for this, but not the asshole. I'm an identical twin. Matching names is probably the cruelest thing that you could do to a person. It's not just confusing. It would keep the twins from developing identities outside of their twinness. You know what happens to twins that can't establish independent identities? At best, they need years of family therapy to work through their relationship problems. At worst, they hate each other. Twins have it hard enough working through what it means to be a twin. Why make it harder? Also, speaking practically, F the parents that do that creative spelling bullcrap for common names. There is no way you look at the name Seen and think to yourself, yup, that's clearly pronounced as Sean. Edit, apparently I misjudged this thread. When I wrote this, everyone was saying that OP was the asshole because they were rude and their opinion was not needed. Reading it back, OP probably could have phrased it better, but it needed to be said. Also, when I was criticizing the name, I was referring exclusively to the name Seen and not Sean. Sean is a normal name, and quite frankly, the correct spelling of that name. Seen is the ridiculous name. Maybe I'm also an asshole, but if she can't handle the backlash for her kids' names, think about how her boys will feel growing up. Might as well start now because they're in for a childhood of jabs and jokes. Hopefully she legally changes them after a good night's sleep in a few months. Exactly. Peers are eventually going to distinguish them by their traits. Handsome Sean, smart Sean, funny Sean. But if one of them becomes one of those, well, that leaves the other Sean being the opposite of that. I can't imagine how it would feel for a kid to grow up feeling like ugly Sean, or stupid Sean, or boring Sean. Or Sean spelled right and Sin spelled wrong. Not the asshole. Sean isn't a stupid name, but Sin is. I don't care if you were rude, it's better for the mum to have the rude awakening before her children are born, rather than after. And OP says, the children are born. That is their registered names. I feel bad for those poor bullied children then. Hopefully they'll cut contact with the mum. God, I, I guess we, we should have seen that one coming. <laughs> Wait, no, I didn't rob this bank, it was my identical twin brother, a Sean, but spelt with an E. You bloody liar, as if that's believable. Lock him up and throw out the key. And now up to the post, there is an edit and an update. My co-worker's husband, who is also a co-worker, saw the post last night. They had a good chuckle and ended up agreeing with the replies that the naming process wasn't ideal and maybe the overwhelming process of having two newborns left them too tired to think straight. Despite the fact they had already sent off the paperwork to Birth, Deaths and Marriages office, the place that you lodge births for in Australia, they called up the Brisbane office and the paperwork had only been provisionally processed due to Christmas time and they've used this time to reassess. They have withdrawn the paperwork for Seen only, and will think of a new name, but they are keeping Sean Sean as they like it. 
I have also been reported to HR for making this Reddit post, not by the parents, they think it's hilarious. So, well, well, if it isn't the consequences of my actions. They also wanted everyone to know that calling her an idiot isn't the worst thing that I've said to her this year, and while I'm definitely an asshole, that's more of an in-general thing than just tied to this situation. Happy holidays to everyone. Unexposed is titled, Am I the asshole for exposing my parents' favoritism? So my parents have always favored my younger brother. I was by no means unloved, but it was blatantly obvious who they cared about more. I worked a part-time job to get my first car, but my brother got one as a present. It wasn't new, but was much newer than my car. It was the same with just about anything else, like clothes, video games, and cell phones. I'm 18 and am taking a gap year before community college to work a full-time job and to save money for tuition. But a while back, I heard my parents talking about how much they were going to pay for my brother's tuition. I secretly recorded the conversation from around the corner and then came out asking my parents why they were going to pay for my brother's college, but not mine. They didn't notice my phone was recording and just said that my brother needs more help. I asked how, so when I wasn't getting any sort of scholarship, and he likely wouldn't either. Then I asked a few more questions about why things have always been this way. They got mad, and my father told me that perhaps it's time that I moved out, because they're sick of keeping a roof over my head. I pointed out that I pay rent, but they didn't care. I left the room, and in a fit of rage, uploaded the video to two different social medias. I have ranted about how this is how my parents have always been. Well, a few hours later, my parents were pounding at my door. My dad was screaming at me about how I made them look bad. We fought some more, and they left the room fuming. My grandparents contacted me later and said that they were appalled, and then came to visit with a lot of the family the next day. There was a huge family intervention, and my parents were made to sit on the couch and to look at their feet while being told off. It was then I found out that they had been receiving money for years from my grandparents to help with family expenses. My brother looked like he didn't know what to do, so he sided with the rest of the family and said he has noticed how I'm treated as well. My parents gave me a huge apology that sounded forced. My grandparents have offered that I come live with them soon and will cut off the monthly payments to my parents, and my father told me that I should never have told the rest of the family and now won't talk to me, and my mother has been crying for days so I'm starting to wonder if I went too far. So, am I the asshole for exposing my parents' favoritism? OP has offered the following explanation for why they think they might be the asshole. I think I might be the asshole because instead of just keeping quiet, I went and told the whole world online, and now my parents may have financial issues without my grandparents' money, and now I feel like if I move in with my grandparents, I may just be running away. Now in the comments, not the asshole. Your parents are just pissed because people know the truth about them and they are no longer going to be receiving handouts from your grandparents. That is what they are really upset about. Losing the free money. Go live with your grandparents. They sound awesome with how quickly they backed you. Not the asshole all the way. As someone who was cast aside because my parents favored my younger sibling over my brother and I, I applaud you loud and clear. Go live with your grandparents if that's what you want or go stay with your friends. I have a feeling you are going to be just fine and excel at whatever career you choose. You didn't go too far. You conquered. In addition, you will make your own family in the future. That is comforting. Not the asshole. They were given monthly payments for family expenses, not their favorite child expenses. Plus, if they didn't do anything wrong, they wouldn't be upset about you telling the rest of the family, nor would there be an intervention. Favoritism is horrible and causes a lot of damage. I mean, you were getting kicked out for asking why your little brother was getting help and you weren't. I hope you take your grandparents' offer to move out and save money to pay tuition fees. Oh, and don't feel guilty about anything. Your parents made this bed and they have to lay in it, not you. And now on to the update. I decided to go ahead and call my grandparents to accept their offer to move in. During the phone call, I asked them why there was monthly payments being sent to my parents. It turns out my parents were living beyond their means for a while because my mother quit her job to be a full-time stay-at-home mom. 
My grandparents decided to help out by sending them money monthly to help with my parents' mortgage and also to set aside some of that money for college savings for both my brother and I that was to be split evenly. Turns out my parents only planned to put that savings towards my brother's college, and that's also how they bought his car as well. So from now on, my parents are now on their own financially. It's likely my mother will have to go back to work to help my dad keep up with the mortgage. I confronted my parents and asked why they always treated my brother as the favorite, and then asked if there was something that I needed to know. It turns out, there was nothing. Literally nothing. I'm not an affair baby, not even an unplanned pregnancy. They just liked my brother more. I was mad as hell, and we argued a lot before I left the room because I had had enough. My grandparents showed up on Saturday with a moving truck. My parents were floored when we started bringing in boxes to pack. My father got in our way, and I reminded him how he said that I should move out, so I am. My mother cried some more and said that my father was just angry in the moment when he said that, and they had been counting on my rent money to help with my brother's college fund. I asked if that meant he would never have to pay rent like I did when he turns 18. My father then said that since I was taking a gap year to work, then my rent money could have helped my brother, which means they never intended for him to get a job while going to college. My grandpa was enraged and confronted my father, saying he raised him better than this. He chewed him out, saying he has never been more disappointed in him, and they will no longer receive any more financial support. Then said that he would disown them both if they ever tried to retaliate against me for exposing them. My father backed down, and neither he or my mother said another word to me. I had a bit of an awkward conversation with my brother as we said our goodbyes to each other. And that was it. I just got in my car, waved, and drove off. I'm now fully moved into my new room at my grandparents' house. It's a little smaller, but nice, and my grandparents are very welcoming. I'm going to keep working hard to move forward from here, and I appreciate everyone's support. Now in the comments, this makes me miss my grandma. I have a stutter, and my uncles used to bully me and make fun of me. One time my grandma heard about it, and she made hell. She has seven sons and some with grandkids. I have never seen seven grown men cry before. She made them apologize to me in front of their wives and kids. She didn't talk to them for two months, and they crawled back to her feet for mercy. Dad had the audacity to tell to your face he only wants you there to pay rent to help your brother, for his benefit only? He is delusional, and should be taken off the will so you get all of their share from the grandparents. And they are only sad OP is moving out because now they don't have his rent money. For real, I didn't think I could be any more appalled at their behavior at that point, but I was very wrong. I'm so sorry this happened to you. My dad's parents were just like this for absolutely no reason either. I am glad your grandparents have helped you move in with them. Kudos to you for trying so hard to buy your own car, etc. And edit, OP should look at the comments about his credit and his parents opening it in his name. These are very important. And OP says, thanks. It took a year of saving from a part-time job to afford the car, but I got a good deal on it and it runs pretty decent. And about that credit, OP, keep an eye on your credit. Your parents already showed that they have no regard for your life, so they might open credit in your name. Trust me, that is what happened to me. Good luck. I'm glad you have nice and sympathetic grandparents. Your parents are ghouls. Like, why have kids if you can't commit to love them? OP replies, my thoughts exactly. Don't have more than one kid or any kids if you can't love equally. I have two boys. They are very different children. They drive me crazy in very different ways. But I love them and I couldn't imagine treating one as a commodity and a rent check while spoiling the other. And the fact that they still whined about how your rent was going to pay for your brother's college. Nauseating. I am glad you have such supportive grandparents. Sorry you have such shitty parents. OP says, thanks. Either way, I just hope this is a wake-up call for both my parents and brother. My father is a pretty hard-working person, but it's clear that he and my mother slowly eased into doing things this way for so long that they dug their heels in deep. And now they are sinking in mud. The question is, are they going to be able to pull their feet out?
Unexposed is titled, Am I the asshole for telling my best friend she can't stay at my house with my husband when I'm out of town? So, I, 36 female, live with my husband and child. My best friend Stacy, 37 female, has been staying with us the last few weeks while her home undergoes renovation. I met my best friend in college and we're pretty opposite when it comes to a lot of things. She is far more carefree, particularly with men. She loves dating committed men. Wives, fiancés, or girlfriend, she doesn't care and will pursue for the thrill. There have been a couple of occasions where she's been confronted publicly by spouses, and she just laughs it off after the fact. Although she can be a bit flirtatious, she's never actually done anything totally out of line with my husband, but she has with the boyfriend of a mutual friend. And now onto the issue. I'm going to Las Vegas in a couple of days, and I'll be gone for five days. I told her that I would prefer if she stayed elsewhere while I'm gone. She asked why, and I told her it's because of her history of going after men in relationships, and I wasn't comfortable with her there while I'm gone for so long. She got really defensive, hurt, and started to cry. She insisted that she values our friendship and would never violate that, but I held firm and said that this is just one of those things where I'd rather be safe than sorry. She'll be staying at another friend's house. I feel bad, but I also don't think I'm going to change my mind. My husband doesn't care either way, and said she should understand why I feel that way, but my sister and a couple of our mutual friends said that I should trust her, and even if I don't, I should trust my husband. Am I the asshole? Now in the comments, not the asshole. For people saying, don't you trust your husband? One, you know she is a man-eater who enjoys ruining committed relationships. And two, he knows she is your friend. Why would you intentionally put him in a position where he has to ask her to leave while you are gone, and then tell you why he asked her? What if she made false accusations against him, either in response to him putting her out, or another way to mess up your relationship? If she has changed, maybe this will be enough motivation for her to figure out why commitment to other people is such a turn-on for her. If she hasn't, not the asshole for proactively protecting your family, but I too wonder why you let her stay with you in the first place, given her total lack of shame previously. Good on you for putting your husband, your family, and the future of your friendship ahead of her short-term preferences. And OP replies, thank you, and I do fully trust my husband. We've had plenty of guests and have had roommates in the past, and cheating has never been an issue or fear that I've had. She specifically likes committed men. She probably has low self-esteem and needs to feel pretty and wanted by knowing that a committed man has put his relationship in jeopardy just to be with her. You shouldn't be friends with such a vile person. Yeah, I've honestly been sitting here wondering why OP is still friends with this person. It seems like a disaster waiting to happen. She openly pursues committed men, she has dated a friend's boyfriend in the past, she has flirted with your husband. What on earth has your friend done specifically to earn the trust that everyone is saying that you are required to give her? And while you may trust your husband, why on earth would you put him in this situation? Not the asshole. I think the bigger question is why she's friends with this woman, when she's a homewrecker of other people's relationships and then just laughs it off because it's Stacy being Stacy, but when it's your relationship, suddenly being a homewrecker becomes a bad thing. I'm gonna go with everyone sucks here. Your friend, for obvious reasons, going after married and committed men on purpose is just trashy. You, for continuing to be friends with her knowing about this tendency, and for completely disregarding your husband's agency in any of this. If she tried something, he could kick her out. It is his house too. And if you think he wouldn't, why are you married to this man then? If for some reason you were determined to keep being friends with a known homewrecker, your husband is the one that you should have talked to about this. Told him your concerns, and assured him that he should feel free to kick her to the curb if she got inappropriate. But if you don't trust him to do that, then again, why are you married to him? Besides, Stacy never once has been alone in this house with hubby since staying with you? If something was going to happen between them, OP, let's be real. It probably already has. You're the asshole for being friends with her at all. You're cool with her effing other people's husbands, but not yours? I basically said this exact same thing. OP is like the guy who has friends who treat women like garbage, but then freaks when his friend wants to date his sister. OP's friend destroys relationships and enjoys it. 
but Opie is fine with it as long as her friend doesn't destroy her relationship. You're the asshole. And now on to the update. I spoke with Stacy after work tonight and it was tough. She saw this thread and was upset that I brought it to Reddit and allowed strangers to judge her. She also acknowledged that what she does is wrong and said she is working on it, hasn't been with anyone in a while, and she has issues that no one understands. She said that more than anything she is hurt because I really thought that she would sleep with my husband despite not trying to do so in the over 15 years we have all known each other. I brought up things she has done in the past that has added to my discomfort and she insisted that it was innocent and she never meant anything by it. She said she's going to leave permanently because she doesn't feel welcome knowing that she isn't trusted and she doesn't want to stay where she is not wanted. She went silent for what seemed like forever and then said, I think you did the right thing. If the situation was reversed, I would have asked you to leave too. And then said again that she has issues and she's not sure why she does it. She started to cry and I told her that whatever she is going through can be worked on and she can talk to someone who can help sort out her feelings and give her some insight. And she said she would work on herself. We hugged it out and I told her I will be here for her while she works through it all. And that, my dear friends, is where I'm going to leave today's episode. Again, I do hope you enjoyed. I hope you are having a lovely, wonderful day. If you're asleep right now, I hope you're having some amazing dreams. No nightmares. Nightmares are really bad. Also, don't forget to drink water. Water good. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.